Okay, we're going to look at what a multiband compressor is um, and as it applies to the Dyn8 plugin. So again, this is the overview of the Dyn8. This is where I see the multiband compression on the top and the dynamic EQ on the bottom. We haven't talked about what, what dynamic EQ is yet, but we're, get, we're getting there. But first, let's unpack the multiband compressor. A multiband compressor um, divides the sound into its lows, its low mids, its high mids, and its highs. Um, that happens by these crossover filters. So just like a sound system has a crossover that sends the low frequencies only to the subwoofers and everything else to the main speakers, or just like within a speaker cabinet, um, there are usually passive crossover filters that separate what sound goes to the woofer inside your speaker cabinet and what sound goes to the tweeter if you've got two elements in a speaker. So this is a very similar concept. Um, these are the shapes of the crossover filters. And I, I can see that the, the slope is really steep now at 24. I have different slope options, um, three different options. I have 6 dB per octave of crossover, 18, or 24 is the most divided. This is the most surgical um, crossover point between two filters. These are the steepest curves of the crossover filters. So a, a multiband compressor divides the sound into these four parts of the sound, and each part of those gets its own compressor that is only looking at this portion of the sound and only acting on this portion of the sound, um, at least traditionally. So in the old hardware versions of these, you used to have to get a massive, expensive uh, multiband compressor that you could only put one sound through. And um, as I said, traditionally, each band is only seeing its part of the frequency range and it's only acting on this part of the free frequency range. So in this example here, I've got um, the low mid compressor um, stepping in and acting on the low mids at this threshold of like nearly minus 20. Um, this is the ratio of that compressor. So we already know what compression ratios are and you have control of the ratio. This is um, kind of how heavy handed the compressor is going to be. This is the point where it's kicking in. Um, and I can go in here and adjust where the crossover points are. So I've set these, this is my low mid zone and I get to play with that and change exactly where it is. And this is how firmly it will compress the low mids when the low mids are getting, um, are getting out of control, when they're getting higher. So um, in this case, we're looking at a snare drum. When the snare drum is played really hard, um, the harder these low mids get, the louder the low mids get, the more compression is applied to the low mids. Um, if you look at the other three bands, the threshold is up at 0, 0.0. So these are probably not going to kick in at all. And we're only, this is mainly a low mid compressor that's only looking at low mids and only acting on low mids. I can even make that a bigger guarantee by taking out the other bands. I can only have the low mid um, compressor active of these multibands, but I can use them all in different proportion and set their thresholds differently as well. Um, two other things I want to show you within this. Um, like I said, typically a multiband compressor is only looking at the band that it's acting on, but with one little button, I can change this to wide, and what this means is now it, this compressor is reading the whole frequency range. So it's just listening now to the snare drum as a whole, and whenever the snare signal gets above this threshold, it's acting on the low mids. So that's what this split versus wide means. Um, Multiband compressors used to have to be split all the time. But now it gives you the option of reading the whole sound and acting on only a portion of the sound. Some more features as we're looking around. You can see that um, the attack releases are, are um, automatic right now and it's on this auto punch mode. There's 
different options um, for auto attack and release. And there are two manual options, I think, too. Yes, peak-based um, attack and release and averaging-based attack and release, where I could go in. I definitely don't want to do that. There's just too much going on for me to zero in and manually set attack and release times on four different compressors just on this channel and see how it works. So for the sake of drums, for instance, I'm happy to keep it in this auto punch mode. Um, and then you can see how quickly that compressor is acting. Um, this would be visible as the sound is coming through. I would see this line move with some filled in parts showing me the compressor in action. Um, so it, it um, it's very visible um, when this compressor is actually working. So I can zero in on all these details, set all the controls for it, and then the Dynate top window shows me this compressor when it's working and shows me the dynamic EQ separately, which is a whole other concept that we'll look at in just a sec.